Hello, everybody, and welcome back to I've Got Next. I have Corey Jones. He's an insurance agent. I'm going to let him introduce himself. But um, insurance is something that we all need to learn more about and get into. So, Corey, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, I'm, uh, my name is Corey Jones. I'm an insurance agent here in Virginia. I have uh, two uh, State Farm offices, right, and one in Newport News and one in Chesapeake, Virginia. So. Okay, okay. So let me ask you this. How did you get into insurance? Oh, man, everyone always asks me that, and I'm going to be honest with you. It's a peer pressure situation. Okay. Um, uh, shout out to my guy, Jeff. My guy, my guy Jeff, he really uh, – he put me on game. He, was, he, he had stayed on me about it for, uh, uh, gosh, it, it was probably, he initially came at me, God, almost 20 years ago, to be mm -hmm. honest with you, probably a little shy of 20 years ago. And I was just like, nah, man, it ain't for me. It's not for me. And he kind of saw something in me, I guess, that made sense for the industry. And I just kind of stayed away from it. And I was like, nah, man, I got a good job. I, I work, you know, 30 hours a week. I'm seeing a hundred K, you know, I'm like, crazy with it so he stayed on me with it he kept dropping you know jewels and 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 just basically like making me feel bad about working for someone else and a bunch of other stuff and kind of encouraged me because he's like not a lot of people look like us in insurance so you you, you got kind of a, a easy going like uh mentality so you'll you'll do well in it uh i'm still not hearing them fast forward it's five maybe eight years later and then he's like coming at me again. I'm like, dude, we you getting a recruiting fee for this? And he's like, he don't get nothing for it. But I'm like, bro, you getting something for it. Ain't no way. You going at me this hard. So fast forward, I'm still ignoring. I'm still at the, the gig. And and he's like, yeah, you know, if, you, if they can afford to pay you 100, that means they're making a million off you. He throwing salt in the game and all of that. So I'm still not hearing him. Still not hearing him. Then I like to travel. And that's my weakness. Um the company sent him to Africa and Spain in the same month. So then I was like, all right, let me let me listen to see what this dude's talking about. So the rest after that is kind of history. But that that was uh, kind of a turning point for me when they, he was like, yeah. I was like, oh, Africa and Spain? Okay. I, I hear what you got to say for now. And, <laughs> and here we are, you know. So seven years later, here we are. I could have been doing this for 20 years. I'd be almost retired by now, but. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Tell me some of the perks, because you came. It sounded like you had a really good job before you got into this. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. You were making so, a good living, decent living. So, what are the perks of moving to the insurance side of things? Uh, as an owner, it's a, it's it's basically no cap to your income. It's basic. You you have no limitation. Um, you you're you're your own person. You are able to hire your own team you're able to set forth your kind of your you want you you set the culture for your office those are some of the biggest perks i never have to do an interview again for a position if i don't want to um i have you know infinite i could take an infinite time off if i just wanted to slow down a little bit but those are are kind of quality of life is probably one of the best things i could say as far as why I, I, I stay in the industry, it's just quality of life as a whole. Um, that we put a big uh, push on family, so I like to do different stuff and, and, and being out and just being able to exist and live the life I want to live with the income I want to live based on the amount of work I want to put in that week, that month, that year. So it's probably one of the biggest perks. Uh, other thing is, is developing people. That's why I stay in it. I like to help people kind of get started from an employee standpoint. I like to get someone, you know, maybe new to the industry or maybe I got some young people and I got some old people that are actually meshing together because they either had a like a fail, not a fail, I don't want to say fail, but they had some experiences that didn't work out how they thought it would. And they're like, hey, maybe if I kind of study with you a little bit, I can have my own agency. And that's an opportunity for them too. So I, I really like the development of people too that's probably both the answers why i still stay in it okay so let me ask you this let's go back okay let's go back to some of your first days in the insurance game so let's go back a little bit okay because i don't want people to look at this and say oh get to insurance i'll make what i want to make blah 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 like i want you to talk about the grind the bill listen um um i could go on for days man it's always 
it's always it's it's always different, which I like. I like the variety, but then some days just make you want to fold. Like I like when I started out, I didn't even have an office. My office wasn't built. I've been going with war through wars with contractors for seven years. Um, initially come in the game, I'm, I got my start date is June first. I'm ready to rock. Everything's progressing along that timeline, and the contractor just stops working in my building for like three weeks. And I'm like, hey, man, you going to be on schedule for our schedule? He's like, yeah, we're going to make it. We're going to make it. Then the city delays them. So I didn't have an office when I opened at all. So I had to go buddy up with another agent who taxed me hard. Hey, I owe you for that, by the way. Um, he hit me bad. He, he, he really got me. I, I'm new to the industry, so I didn't know what to pay and what what you know what's normal but he he hit me in the chest for three months and, and he got he got paid off me um so come into that that was uh, probably day one was that that was a problem staffing is always an issue um when i went into the i had like a preliminary meeting with all my team my supposedly team members the week uh or two weeks before we opened something like that i had six main people show up six people show up to the dinner when we opened, only two people were there. Um, crazy. Uh, just just stuff like that, man. Uh, always something going on, man. Like there's, you, you have to build your own client base with very little money if you don't know how to manage your money. If you're new to the industry, you don't really know how your paychecks work. That's a whole nother thing. It's a learning curve. Then you have to learn the cycle of the business is a whole nother one. The cycle, because like you'll have summertime months where everyone's buying stuff, it you'll you'll be like, oh, I'm making a lot of money, making a lot of money, but you forget about February, March, April, when every, and it lulls out, and then you're not making the same money you're making in the summer. So it's a lot of learning curves that you have to adjust to. I hope that answered the question. I oh, know it definitely did. It definitely did. Um, what type of is there a specific type of background? Is there a specific type of, oh, I came from this industry, so I'll be good in this, or it's just depends on the person and personality type? The person, man. I, I, I've hired people. I have some of my best people. One of my best guys, he, he fresh out of college, no experience. He's a, he's a bartender. Um, I got another guy that came from insurance industry. He does pretty well. So he has a background. The other one doesn't. And they're very competitive. Um, I usually look for people that I don't mind having a drink with. That's kind of how I recruit. I'm like, you might have all the skills. We had a, like someone recently that literally had more um, certifications than me. And, and it's crazy to say, but her, she didn't fit the dynamic of our office. So we kind of got rid of her. It's, it's more or less like you, you just look for people you like to work with that, um, that, you can teach to be, not even teach, it, just having that likable nature is a big part of it. There's no rhyme or reason for what people do well. Like one of the, the top guys, um, he was a, a team member in another agent's office, another top guy, he was a school teacher. I come external, I was an engineer by trade. Um, so it, it doesn't matter, it's just who's gonna hustle hard and who's going to like not make excuses is kind of what I look for and, and recruiting people. And I guess that's what they look for in me because it, it's easy to get complacent in this industry. You start making more money than you ever made and you're like, oh, I can take my foot off the gas. But when you do, someone is right behind you. So I'm looking for people with the same kind of mentality as me. There's no, I wish they argue like, yeah, that. <laughs> hire that kind of person. Hire right. that kind of, I'll be at them places every day. Like, hey, you, I, I need you, you, and you. But it, it's no rhyme or reason at all to it. Okay, okay. Um, you said you you have two offices now, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, I have um, one in New Purdue, one in Chesapeake. Yeah. Okay, so with opening the yeah. other office, was there yeah. a fear factor? Was there a maybe I should open it earlier or how did you go into that decision? Well, that one was kind of, not everyone gets that opportunity. It was afforded to me and I just got in a position where I just started 